Hi and greetings from Racing Divas Garage. Uh, today we are answering another question which you guys often and frequently ask. Uh, if you have limited slip differential already on your car but you want a different gear ratio, what to do? Uh, generally, in uh, nowadays, it, it's, uh, every day it's harder and harder to find used unit, used limited slip differential, especially in the gear ratio you need and desire. So, uh, today uh, we're gonna show you how to swap different gear ratio set into a differential unit which you already have. Uh, so, here we have differential from this car, E36 uh, van, and uh, this uh, current gear ratio is 3.63, and since we swapped a different uh, gearbox, we used the E46 uh, 2 liter diesel gearbox in this car, uh, we're gonna swap uh, 4.45 uh, gear ratio set in this differential, and uh, we're going to show you how to do it by yourself and which parts you actually need uh, to complete the job successfully. Uh, so follow us in this video, hope you like it, uh, what we are about to explain. So, uh, now I'm going to give this uh, to my colleague to clean it, so we can assemble everything clean. The good, good point is to clean all the parts before the assembly. So, this one goes to cleaning. Uh, while, we, uh, while we work further uh, on the differential disassembly. Come here to, to check what we are doing over here while uh, he cleans all the parts. Removing side flanges first. Side caps, just to find the tool. small piece of advice right now at this point uh, as you you noticed already uh, this is a sealant paste which goes out from this and this uh, hole of the cap uh, so when you tighten these nuts uh, right here uh, sorry these screws right here use sealant paste because the hole goes through uh, the hosing and oil can leak from these bolts outside you you don't want you don't want that. Sometimes when the se uh, seal inside is uh, better, then it is harder to remove the cap. I suggest using two screwdrivers to, to lift it, but gently. Like this. A bit help of a hammer. And it's off. This pop out by itself. Lovely. Uh, generally, if you don't want to uh, change to replace uh, bearings, side bearings in this process, then please remember uh, for the caps which, which one was left and which one was right so you don't mix 
cones with bearings originally, so uh, keep them apart. So this one to the left, this one to the right. And now you can remove carrier unit from the housing, right here. We won't be touching it in this video. If you have any questions regarding assembly of differential of LSD unit, then please write us email or leave a comment and we will do a video for you. But in this video we will focus on the gear ratio swap, not on the LSD unit itself. But you need to remove the crown gear. Uh, to remove the crown gear, you need to remove this speed sensor. So I will do that right now, sorry. And now to remove the crown gear. And now to remove the pinion gear. Input flange off. Off to the hydro press. To press this thing down. You can hammer this down as well, but you will need hydro press for this job anyway so keep that in your mind I'm done back on the table thank you And here's the pinion gear. You can pair it with your old crown gear. Don't mix it up. So we will be install it, uh, installing this one into this housing and show you how. We'll take a small break to clean the table and be with you in one second. And we're back. Clean the bolts for the new screw adhesive. To degrade them from previous usage so the new screw adhesive can make its job. This will be more than enough. So to decrease number of parts placed on the table, we'll firstly put new crown gear to LSD carrier unit and so we can move that aside. Take your time doing this because it takes very little to spoil the thread here so be gentle
time for screw adhesive. Small amount is enough. Actually, no specific torque spec on these bolts, but if you insist, 120 Newton meters is enough. If you use screw adhesive, if you don't use screw adhesive, then add additional 20 Newton meters, so 140 if you don't use screw adhesive. So we are ready to move this aside. We will. We won't be. Oh, sorry. Not to forget the speed sensor important part of to hydro press we have a very special tool for this here it is special tool number one This is enough. And this unit is ready to be installed. We will leave it right here while we deal with the hosing and the pinion gear. So, before we continue to disassemble this, I wish to explain a couple of things. First thing, and the one which are you most curious about is crush sleeve. Uh, we get, uh, we frequently get questions uh, if I loosen this input flange nut, can I retighten the differential again with the old crush sleeve? Answer is no, but we come up with the solution. Let me just show you. We didn't try this solution to be honest with you, but we are testing it right here live in this video. So you will have the results from the first hand live. Old crush sleeve. Sorry. With this additional shim, 0.88 millimeter will make this crush sleeve reusable. So uh, we'll be using the old crush sleeve in this video, although we have prepared new one just in case if something goes wrong with our test. We'll be able to finish this video for you. Uh, but we are trying to, to make a solution that you, don't, you can swap gear ratio without purchasing the new crush, crush sleeve. So we'll be get back to this later. And the other important thing uh, regarding gear ratio swap is this bearing right here. No matter how new your bearing is, you still have old bearing cone left in the housing, uh, which uh, cannot be, uh, let me help you with, with the camera, right here you have old bearing cone from the old, old uh, bearing stuck on the previous uh, pinion gear, which shouldn't be combined with uh, the bearing from the new pinion gear. So uh, we highly advise you to change uh, at least, at least this large pinion bearing if you're not planning to change all bearings once the differential is apart. But uh, this is the least you can do, so get a new bearing uh, for this differential 
uh, otherwise you can face some noises and whining noises uh, when you release the throttle and so on. So we will show you how to remove this bearing, how to remove this bearing cone uh, and how to assemble this further. Uh, to remove this bearing cone, unfortunately you need to remove the oil seal. As you can see this one is quite new because we assembled this unit before for our colleague's car. Uh, but sadly this uh, oil seal needs to go out and we will destroy it. going in the trash. So to summarize the story, what, uh, what, which parts you need minimally to uh, swap gear ratio? You need large pinion bearing, you need uh, input shaft uh, sealing and you need uh, a set of uh, adjustment shims for the backlash and, uh, and uh, gear patch. Uh, we'll come to this later. We'll try to show you how to avoid purchasing of new crush sleeve, but anyway, you can purchase a new crush sleeve if you want. We, we don't have nothing against it. Uh, to remove this cone right now, we will use our special tool, tool number two. It's just a regular plate, flat on two side, sides, this will help us to remove this. Just to place it on original position. So, special tool number two is in the house, moving to the hydro press. Perfect. Sorry. Here it is. Old bearing cone, so we said. No matter how good this one is, you need to replace it in order to pair it with uh, the with new bearing on the new pinion gear. Don't forget this shim to place it be, uh, behind this, as you will make a double effort for nothing, so remember to place this inside the housing. Back where we were. Large pinion bearing, new one. Trash. We'll form, let's say, gear ratio swap uh, kit for you guys for small, medium, and large case differential. So you don't worry about uh, each particular part. So uh, we'll form the, the complete set for you, which will include all necessary parts like this bearing, like, like adjustment shim set, like a new crush sleeve or a shim for reusing a crush sleeve. Uh, we'll see about that, but for now to show you how to deal with the differential. Shim, then bearing cone, new one. If you don't have special tools, tools like we do, uh, then you can use old bearing cone to press down the new bearing cone. You improvise. Thank you.
This sounded like end, and it is. So you got new bearing cone replaced its original position. Here it is. You can now return small pinion bearing, inspect it as, as differential is already disassembled, uh, then inspect all parts for the damage potential and replace them if there is need for it. But this differential is barely new. So We'll be using old, old uh, small pinion bearing. And now we come to the part, the hardest part to remove this bearing from the pinion shaft. We'll be back in a minute. And now we're about to cut the bearing off. So don't forget guys for safety, your eyes first. First, cut the collar out. <laughs> Our cameraman step away, just, just to tell you that uh, he step away three steps like I'm holding the box. But safety first. You can do the rest with a hammer. One is hot. And here is where the problem begins, actually. And we're back. Hopefully this will be enough. Just to keep the table safe. Thank you, cracked. Now once we got this removed, uh, we are ready to install the new bearing on this pinion shaft. Here, to the hydro press. all the way down and ready to be installed in the housing. And now we can use spare this way, use crushed sleeve. Everything in its place. Second try. Yeah. 
It would be great if you have someone to help you with this because the housing is not pretty heavy but it has weight. Right. Great. And now you need to press down the pinion gear to small pinion bearing. Check for free play. Don't press it too much because you have to leave some room for tightening of the input shaft nut. nut. Another one. Be gentle here. Leave only a small free play between pinion and the housing. You will tighten it more easily. Like this one. Hope you hear this sound. That's it. Like this. Before you tighten the input flange, you need to put oil seal. Don't forget it, it sounds crazy, but it happened to me quite a few times. To clean the spot for the oil seal, use brake cleaner, clean it well. It's wiser to clean this surface before you put the bearing, because if the differential is old and rusty, then you will end up with some particles from from the hosing inside the small pinion bearing. So avoid that. I can do it right now with this differential because this one is barely used. So it's, it's like new, no risk of rusty particles inside the bearing. But when you do it on your old differential, then make sure you do this before you put the bearing inside. Now, ready for the oil seal. That's right here. I always prefer to use sealant paste between oil seal and the surface on the differential because when the differential is old uh, from rust, it starts to be worn out right here, so it loses oil there, so it's stupid. To make sure that doesn't, doesn't happen, just put small amount of sealant component, sealant compound right here and ensure that you don't lose oil besides the oil seal. Perfect. Not so hard to do, isn't it? Remove the extra sealant paste. And now it is ready for the input plan. See how small free play I left for the tightening. So you have to tighten input flange 
uh, to lose this this uh, free play getting on to that this is a crucial part of proper differential rebuild we showed it in uh, some of our, our previous videos you can check our youtube channel to to watch them but anyway we'll do it again and show you how to do it properly We'll need this torque wrench. Great. This one. So. Here's the resistance. Tighten 10 degrees each time like this and then check for the free play and the torque resistance do it 10 degrees by 10 degrees uh, that way will you will avoid oh, more that will you will avoid over tightening of the input flange nut if you over tighten this nut you will have to disassemble uh, the whole thing again add another shim or a new crush sleeve possibly and then do it all over again so make sure you tighten the clamp well too more have patience with this because it is a lot easier to do a couple of more times than to do whole job with the hydro press again so take your time and do it slowly let's check pinion torque resistance it is important measure I feel under my hand a little bit more of, of axial free play. So I'm gonna tighten once more 5 degrees and then check for the torque resistance of the pinion shaft. I believe we are now ready for the measuring. Yes. Now free play. And now, how to measure pinion torque resistance? We already talked about this one, but never mind. Let's do it again. You need a torque wrench, very sensitive, which measures from hours, measures for, measure from zero to one kilogram, which means zero to 10 Newton meters. So you put this, and then spin for one circle and watch carefully for the dial you need to have 0 0.8 around 0 0.8 newton meters this one doesn't have resistance at all which means you need to tighten it more so 0. Point between 0, 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 newton meters uh, this is ideal torque resistance uh, for the 188 millimeter bmw case with tapered roller bearings ball bearings 
require another measure but we have a video about that already check again this is all done without as you can see without carrier unit inside uh, this is the measure 0 0.6 between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 newton meters measured without uh, LSD or any carrier unit, unit inside. This is important. This is 0 0.2. So I didn't, I don't know if you could catch this one, but we are trying to keep the video short. So we'll show you at the end. And final measuring to confirm you did everything well try to keep this as steady as possible so the measuring is relevant we put it to one newton meter slightly more but it's better to put it slightly more than slightly less if you put it below uh, 0.6 then you can expect whining noise uh, when you release the throttle on the coast you will have a whining noise and now when we set up the pinion preload the torque resistance correctly uh, we put uh, bearing inside uh, now it's time to reach for the carrier unit to get it back inside the housing when you're changing gear ratio then besides pinion resistance pinion torque resistance you will have to adjust teeth pattern, tooth patch, as you would like to call it, and the backlash as well. Uh, this is where these shims jump in. To open them, to show you what I mean, you can purchase them from us, from our web shop. If you're a differential builder, then reach for us. Uh, you can get some sort of distributor discount feel free to contact us on the email and this is what you get in one uh, BMW adjustment shim set uh, same shims but different thickness moving on with the video uh, and with uh, final adjustments we are near uh, finalizing this video and please come step here to show you why I told you uh, to uh, move left one to the left and right right one right one to the right sorry um, as pinion shaft has its own preload torque resistance there uh, as well uh, have the carrier unit its own torque resistance and preload uh, those two cups those two caps uh, are holding it together right here making some pressure on this bearing and on this back bearing as well uh, total pressure gives you a total amount of preload on torque resistance so if you're not swapping the carrier unit as in our case then you measure total thickness of left and right together as you can see this one is 1.9 maybe you see this yes you see it 1.9 and this one is 1.5 let's say 1.9 and 1.5 gives you 3.4 millimeter total thickness overall thickness of those two shims uh, which means that this carrier unit installed in this particular housing uh, works the best uh, when you put total thickness of those shims 3.4 millimeters this is the optimal uh, optimal overall thickness for optimal uh, carrier preload uh, measure uh, this is important as we will now tend to move uh, right and left or left depends what would be needed uh, carrier unit inside the housing by cha changing the thickness of uh, side shims which goes right here so when you move uh, how to move 
carrier unit inside. It, it is rather simple. If you put right here thinner shim, uh, then the cup will penetrate more through hosing, moving the uh, LSD unit towards left side. If you put a thicker shim here, then cap will penetrate less inside and then the carrier unit will go to the right. But uh, you, uh, when you do change thickness here, you will have to change thickness here for the same amount uh, in order to keep 3.4 millimeter overall thickness. So 3.4 millimeter could, uh, cannot be changed, so you have to keep 3.4 millimeter overall thickness, but you can adjust the carrier posi position by putting this thinner or thicker and right here to keep 3.4. I think you understood me correctly, so we will now get down to business. First you put the carrier unit inside, like this. I do hope you like our special tool number five. We build it by ourselves. It helps us adjust differentials more easy. From where to begin? Uh, you can try uh, factory shims first. So you know where to uh, start, from where you start and where you need to go. Maybe you're a lottery ticket winner, so maybe you don't need to adjust anything. Maybe factory shims will do the, the job, but, but don't expect that. If that happens, then go and buy lottery ticket, you'll probably win it. some screws to ensure they don't move. Shim got away. Set scale to zero. So sensitive. This is zero and slowly check for the free play between pinion and crown gear. You can see this is 0 0.05 millimeter of backlash. So 0 0.05. This is, we, we now need to go to lottery ticket, to buy lottery ticket and to, to buy it and win it, because we are so lucky. Uh, 0 0.5 until, to zero, sorry, 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 is backlash that you can, you can be happy with. So this is the amount, this is the amount you need to, to achieve. Uh, we will now disassemble this and check for the tooth pattern uh, and gear patch. Moving on to uh, backlash adjustment and uh, gear pattern, tooth pattern. Uh, in the meantime, we decided to increase the backlash a little bit to show you how it's done. Although this one is quite good, but we'll slightly increase it to show you how it's done. But before we do that, uh, we'll check, uh, we'll check the uh, tooth pattern uh, so we know in which direction we are moving. Uh, to do that, you need this kind of gear adjustment compound. Uh, we, will we use yellow as we like it, but there's a blue and there's a red. Check we don't sell it, you can purchase it cheap on the eBay, we buy it there as well. And what is good about it, it uh, is 
differential friendly so you don't need to wash it before you put everything together and fill the diff with oil it will break in with oil don't put too much because it will mess up your measuring but they need to be filled nicely so you can tell something from it like this then spin your differential you can create additional resistance right here so the gear pattern looks more precise and cleaner around lamp oh here it is thank you and I'm not sure would you be able to see this I will look through camera camera right here to check how do you see it I'm not sure how you see it but we'll try to adjust the screen for you this is actually quite good but never mind uh, we will upload a picture behind this scene uh, which shows you uh, which shows which gear pattern is good uh, and shows uh, bad gear patterns and uh, in which direction you need to go to get to optimal gear pattern uh, we will now move this carrier because since we want to increase, increase backlash uh, we will move complete carrier unit to the left by changing these shims to show you how, how it needs to be done and when we increase uh, uh, the backlash gear pattern we will change as well we will check it again to make sure it's correct so after taking a closer look to our gear pattern we are not happy with it uh, we decided to uh, move uh, move gear contact tooth contact uh, from this point to center point as it should be uh, and uh, it's quite good that when we move the carrier unit to the left gear contact will move from this point to this point and we will get wanted increment in the backlash so what we are doing now we, we decided uh, to move the carrier unit to the left how are we gonna do that uh, we're gonna put thinner shim right here uh, for 0.1 millimeter so this cap penetrates further to the carrier unit and uh, 0 0.1 millimeter thicker shim on the left side to keep this cap for penetrating further so uh, those caps will lit literally do this when uh, for 0 0.1 millimeter this is our step so we are doing it now to show you what we will get as a result Gently. Screwdrivers. We said this one was zero, uh, sorry, one point nine, right? One point nine. So here we will use two millimeter shim so 
So after we installed uh, different shim thickness, so shims in different thickness, and uh, now time to, uh, to check the backlash again. Let me take a closer look, let's say zero. Uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, which leads us uh, to conclude that this is a perfect backlash and we moved carrier unit to, to a proper side, yes, 0 0.8 on the backlash, which promises great gear pattern and great differential adjustment, gear ratio adjustment. To check, to check a gear pattern again. Let's spin it. Lamp please, thank you. So now we have coast moved to the center and a throttle moved from this point to the center point. So you can conclude from this that we move the carrier unit to the left. If you have a uh, conclusion is this, if you have a too small backlash then you need to move carrier unit to the left away from the pinion shaft. If you have a backlash too big then you move carrier unit to the right closer to the pinion shaft. For the gear pattern if let me show you here if contact patch is on the inside of the crown gear move the, uh, move the LSD unit or the carrier unit to the left away from pinion shaft. If your contact patch is here on the outer diameter, then you need to move carrier unit to the right closer to the pinion shaft to get uh, contact patch on the center uh, of the gear. Uh, for the backlash I explained and uh, to tell you again uh, how to move carrier unit from left to the right uh, use uh, if you want to move it to the left then you use thinner shim for a cap to penetrate further uh, on on this side you use thicker shim to stop uh, to stop left cap penetrating further and this is how you move complete carrier unit to the left for the right opposite direction thicker shim thinner shim right movement left movement thinner shim, thicker shim. And that's the logic of moving carrier unit, adjusting backlash and adjusting gear patch. So uh, this is actually uh, the basics, the fundamentals that you need to know about changing the gear ratio uh, of your differential. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this, uh, please feel free to, to drop us email or leave a comment below if you, if you want to see uh, other adjustments regarding differential, how to change the carrier unit inside, how to swap LSD instead of open, open uh, carrier unit, then leave a comment and we will do next video for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. We, will, we, re we really tried to pass some knowledge to you guys. Uh, if you need anything more, leave a comment or drop an email. Thank you for watching. We will now finish the assembly. You don't need to, to check that. You already know how to put uh, back, uh, back plate and to put it on the car. So we'll finish everything, go and test. Uh, drop some video on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel and enjoy your day. Thank you.